Most of our churches, all they're trying to do is Christianize a secular worldview. And unfortunately, most people don't realize when you send your kids to a public school, you know, scripture says you're either for Christ or against. If the system's not for, it's against. If the foundation of the worldview is not God's word, it's man's word. So they're getting this very anti-God secular worldview and you're trying to add God to it. Hi, I'm Ken Ham and today I'm joined by Dr. Kaya Costa and rocket scientist Rob Webb. That's me, just rocket science. So, you know what's interesting to me? It's interesting to me that the secular scientists know what the weather was like millions of years ago, but yeah. they can't predict it one hour in advance and be correct. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I was sort of reminded of that as we talk about this next article about an mm -hmm. asteroid millions and millions, what, 66 million Six, years ago, yes. they and claim. And it's so definitively, too. <laughs> and they say it killed off uh, the dinosaurs, and they think they found a fragment of the asteroid and so on. So, um, Rob, do you want to start commenting and then Kaya? Yeah, so apparently, um, according to this article, they found a tiny fragment of the asteroid that supposedly hit the Earth 66 million years ago that has been encased in amber. Um, and so they, they talk about how there's these certain spikes in chromium and nickel and other elements that are only common uh, to other me meteorites as well. So they're saying it's almost certainly of cosmic origin, but really, I mean, throughout a lot of these, these articles, you got to do a good job of separating the facts from the fiction, right? From the observation, from the storytelling. And the observation is they found maybe a fragment of this asteroid, but that's really as far as they can go, right? From there, they have to kind of weave a story and if, you know, within, and I, I just thought it was hilarious. Whenever you read these kind of articles, they talk about these cataclysmic moments and a turning point in the history of the planets and that. Uh, there was like this massive body of water that was unleashed, you know, when this asteroid hit. But does that sound like anything to you? Like you've read that before in the Bible? Does that sound familiar? Might be sort something like a great like flood, flood or something. Yeah, something yeah. like a great but, flood, But maybe. listen, you said th what they found was this fragment in amber, mm -hmm. fossilized. In other words, it was, it was preserved. Mm -hmm. So tell me if this is a fact or if this is interpretation. So they're saying here... Six mil 66 million years ago, they are certain the fish died within one hour of the asteroid strike. Yeah, because they were there, right? They, they observed this? No. Wow, within one hour of the asteroid strike, spring. 66 million years ago, they know yeah. what happened? Yeah. Yeah, they weren't there. <laughs> we didn't even get the storms this morning, they predicted. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and then like, like Kai was saying, I think it's amazing too that they say that the asteroid, um, according to the analysis of this fish fossil, revealed that it hit in spring. But if you guys remember back to Genesis 7, uh, verse 11, it says the flood began in the 17th day of the second month. So it actually, it actually coincides with, mm -hmm. with the biblical timeline as well to saying that it hit in spring. But of course, they have a different worldview because here, here's the thing, guys. We all have the same evidence. We have the same fossils. We have the same rocks. We have the same asteroids. But how we actually interpret that is going to be based on our presuppositions on what our actual starting point is. Is it man's fallible opinion or is it God's infallible word? Right, and it, like he said, it talked about this um, water surge that was unleashed by the asteroid strike. And the asteroid actually was, the impact was in Mexico, I believe, and yep. these um, things were found in North Dakota, yeah. like 2,000 miles away. And it's pretty much your backyard, right? My North backyard, Dakota. I'm from South Dakota, so. Um, but yeah, like he said, and it talks about the preservation of soft tissue, because there's also um, fish and some other things that have been found there, a turtle, and the turtle was impaled, and the fish had debris, so it was, they were violently covered with sediment in a short period of time, and again, very reminiscent of something that yeah. would be very familiar from biblical, uh, the Great Flood. And so I just think a rapid burial in mineralized solution is what's going to lead to this fossilization. And the fact that we even continue to find things like soft tissue and skin um, is really amazing if you're trying to think that this would be 66 million years it's ago. It's not that old. Uh, and, and you know what they do at the end of the article? Do you know what they do with just about any article these days? And so this is going to help us understand climate change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like so something I say all the time with these articles. If you guys want to figure out the bias of the author, just jump to the last paragraph. That's what you're doing. You go to the last paragraph and you see what they're trying to leave you with before you're done reading that article. And right there, they say the climate crisis. They yeah. say uh, it, it's a crystal ball looking back in time and enables us to apply that today's ecological environmental crisis. But they say this is all a part of the evolution of the planet and everything else. Yeah. It's all part of evolution. So even if man was destroying the climate, which is 
that's all based on false assumptions anyway, because if, if you don't believe the flood of Noah's day, you'll get it wrong in regard to climate change, because I believe in climate change. Noah's flood caused climate change, mm -hmm. yeah. right? It's been and changing. We, and we've got to remember that uh, Romans 8, uh, not Romans, Genesis 8.22, 22, after yeah. the flood, God promised Noah, um, it, it, he said, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, day and night, summer and winter will not cease. Right. So we're not going to destroy yeah. the earth. I mean, God will at the appropriate time. But... <laughs> You know, when, when you look at what, uh, what they're trying to do today, it's use everything they can to try to say this is climate change. But if you think about it, if man was destroying the climate, then if we're a part of evolution, shouldn't we let man go and do whatever he wants to do? Shouldn't they be consistent? Yeah. Within their consistent, yeah, within yeah, their worldview. We're just a part of that whole process, so yeah. we should be able to do whatever we want to do. I mean, yeah. they are so inconsistent. All right, the time, and yet we're so. saying we're, we're, we're all of you, really humans, cats, dogs, and rocks, we're all made of the same stuff, so it doesn't really matter. But at the same time, just real quick, you know, we're not saying that we shouldn't be good, good stewards of the earth. You know, we should, be, we should be taking care of God's creation, but we need to be doing it for the right reasons. So, okay. I looked at this article, genetically engineered bacteria have learned to play tic-tac-toe. I don't even know what tic-tac-toe is, but I, but I guess it's something like noughts and crosses. Yeah, he calls it knots and crosses. I read like, that and I'm like, and what is a knots and crosses? <laughs> so you people need to call it knots and crosses. Does anyone else call it knots and crosses or is it just Ken? Who's going to call it knots and crosses from now on? What is wrong with you people? Come on. Um, so Ken, Kaya. Can bacteria actually learn to play noughts and crosses? I mean, tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe. <laughs> you know, this was an interesting study, and again, they're genetically engineered bacteria, so they're not right. native forms. They're something that intelligent people have modified. Um, they're designing these experiments. They do some sort of uh, aversive training, like so if they're not making the right answer, um, they put in something that's going to make them do a different answer the next time. Mm -hmm. um, but what I thought was interesting is that they went through this training period where they were teaching these bacteria how to respond. Um, and then they did it, some simulations that showed that they would eventually beat unskilled humans. Um, so they did all the training where the bacteria were beat every time by humans, um, and then they didn't bother to play the winning games. And so I found that really interesting. It's, they, yeah. um, they just, uh, I, I don't know, maybe not to be proven wrong, I'm not sure. So, so yeah. am, I, am I understanding this right? Humans, using their intelligence, force bacteria to do things they want them to do. Pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the bacteria do, do things because when you do this to them, they do this. Right. What's the purpose of it all? Right. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they try to say, you know, this approach could have all kinds of applications from creating living materials capable of learning to make smart microbiomes, you know, and all this different thing. But, I mean, overall, I just thought, how cool would that be to play tic-tac-toe or knots and crosses with bacteria? I don't know. I mean, maybe that's the only reason they were like, oh, this sounds cool. So, well, and since, each game but takes it's also days. a really long game, yeah. though, because they say Ever since each I was game a kid, I wanted to yeah. play knots and crosses with bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It only takes several Always days at that. a time, you know, because I guess it takes time for the bacteria to respond, and then they try to tra uh, train these bacteria by punishing. If they do a wrong move, then they get a dose of antibiotics, so they try to, you know, learn not to do that again, and I don't know. So maybe there in the go. future, our computers, for their memory chips, will have bacteria in there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, okay. <laughs> well, let's, let's go to this next one here. Yeah. So, potentially alive potentially alive. Potentially. I guess that means they're not alive, but we think they could and maybe they are, and we don't know. So potentially alive, 830 million year old organisms, could something really last that long? A lot anyway, I mean, um, found yeah. trapped in ancient rock. So tell us about this one. Yeah, so apparently it was trapped inside crystals of halite dating back to 830 million years ago, which is, halite is also known as rock salt, basically. So, but um, yeah, they're just throwing out these imaginary times, you know, of course they weren't there. So, of course, we need to take this research with a grain of salt. No? Oh, okay. gosh. <laughs> hey, that's not, that's not bad. So, <laughs> and, uh, in this yeah. halite or salt, they found, uh, here's what I don't understand. Yeah. They found prokaryotic and algal life, prokaryotic mean they don't have nuclei, right? Mm -hmm. Like bacteria. Mm -hmm. And algal life, trapped inside crystals. And then from there, they go to Mars. Yeah. How yeah, because they, they can't jump? help themselves. It's like, oh, they're, because that therefore proves Mars, alien life, so Martians. Therefore, there's aliens on Mars. Yeah, makes perfect sense. That makes perfect <laughs> sense. Yeah, there we are. 
I mean, th these articles are amazing sometimes when you read them. You see what they're yeah. trying to do. They're, they're so desperate yeah. to try to prove evolution and life evolved elsewhere. So what else does the rest of the article say here? Well, they're using these non-invasive optical methods to look inside that rock salt so they don't have to crack it open. And right. so um, transmitted light and ultraviolet mm -hmm. petrography are two methods that they use to look at those. Um, and so they're looking basically at this tiny little piece of water inside a rock that's from ancient times. And there's these prokaryotic or algal life forms. Mm -hmm. um, and then they say it's possible that there could be survival of some of those over all this time. Um, the possible survival of microorganisms organisms over geologic timescales is not fully understood. And it's just kind of amazing to think about how in a drop of water that life could last any amount of time. You know, the resources would be used up, the, the, you know, it just wouldn't be possible. And so it's interesting so to consider. So in other consider. words, in this crystal rock salt, we saw some things, it could possibly be life, that could possibly be alive, we don't know. So obviously there's aliens on Mars. Of that's course, what we've that's got. the logical conclusion. That's yeah. what we've yeah. got. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next one then. Yeah, this is... All right, this, this one's much more exciting. It's about shark teeth. That's right. And they found shark teeth and they analyzed shark teeth and therefore evolution's true. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's basically what I got out of the article. <laughs> Kaya, what'd you find? Yeah. Well, basically they were looking at... Um, sharks have different teeth over their life, like four different sets of teeth. It's called heterodonty. Mm -hmm. And so as young, they have small teeth with maybe only one serration and then as they get older they have more serrations and more because they're tackling bigger prey and need different teeth which actually is evidence of great intelligent design um, but what I found interesting was that when they then looked at some of the extinct species of sharks they found again that the smaller and younger species had simple single serrations and the older larger had mm -hmm. multiple serrations you know larger teeth um, and so again they're talking about um, evolution and yet from the extinct to now they're still doing the same thing that they used to do back then so they mm -hmm. really haven't changed mm -hmm. and so to try to understand how they're making the leap to proof for evolution is difficult so sharks have teeth yep. and they've always had and teeth. they've always had teeth and they're sharp and, and they're still sharks they're as still, they yeah. grow their teeth change mm -hmm. yep. and therefore they talk about in the last paragraph this helps them unravel evolutionary processes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyone else follow the illogical But you know what? <laughs> the trouble is, kids in schools, that's the yeah. sort of thing they're taught, and they think, right. wow, evolution's true. Right. They have no idea. They're just indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just the whole time, I mean, they kept talking about shark embryos already having teeth in the womb, but I just kept thinking about the baby shark song. You know, baby no. shark doo doo. I said, don't start. Baby oh. shark doo doo. It'll be in your head all day now, guys. We have, yeah. a, we have a grandchild. Anyone else know that song? We have a grandchild whenever he comes to our house. <laughs> Alexa, play by baby shark. Yeah. Uh, and then after 50 <laughs> times. It's... So there you go. Have a good rest of your day, guys. You have the baby shark song stuck in your head. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? My teeth change over time. <laughs> so obviously, yeah, you, you, you yeah. evolved. You're evolving. I know. I must you're, you're be evolving. You're evolving. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, you see the equivocation just, on tooth variation, therefore evolution. So, yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next article here. Um, you know, this is becoming a more and more of an issue in the, mm. in the, in the public schools and mm -hmm. secular world. A Wisconsin yeah. school district charges students with sexual harassment for not using trans pronouns. Yep. So, Rob, you want to start this one off? Yeah, I mean, just so basically it's this Wisconsin school district. Um, essentially, they're filing t Title IX charges against three students in the middle school for using the wrong pronouns while speaking to another student. So, I mean, just the whole time, I just think about the war on children that's happening as well, just from the LGBT ideology worldview. Really, it's just a form of sexual humanism um, being forced onto our kids. So this really should be just a wake-up call, just a beware. If you're a parent and you have kids in the public school system, this is is what they're going to be indoctrinated with. And you think about the tolerant, right? They're always try trying to say, we're pushing for tolerance, but really they want total acceptance and total celebration with this. And I just wrote Ephesians 5.11 here. Take no part in the works of darkness, but instead expose them. We need to expose them. We need to be pointing people to the light of Jesus Christ to be able to really just stand firm. And also just we're one week away from the LGBT Pride Month, right? Today is the 25th, so next Wednesday will be the first. So, um, you know, just as Christians, we need to make sure that we're standing ready on the Word of God, putting on the armor of God, because this is only going to get worse. Hey, and you know how you can um, celebrate God as creator uh, right now 
at the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter, we have some wonderful shirts that say the true meaning of yeah. the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I saw someone Genesis walk in with that as well. Yeah. But um, let me, Kai, let me ask you a question here. So the pronouns that weren't being used were so-called non-binary they, them. How can, how can you call someone they anyway when right. they're one person, unless they're multiple persons? Or right. I, I don't understand. Right. What it's is not, they, them? In English grammar, it's not right. And in, yeah. as a physiologist from a biological standpoint, yeah. You know, um, for a, a young person to look at a, a girl and say her when they would prefer to be him, you know, we're going to end up getting or caught they. up in, or they, or yeah, you know, we're going to end up getting mm -hmm. caught up. And it's not, um, it's, you know, there's sexual harassment charges. They're, they're kind of severe charges. Um, yeah, there's they are. Other, other things going on out there where they're, they're getting charged with some pretty serious ramifications. Um, but I think it does mention in here too that these individuals were um, kind of harassing or you know, teasing or something. And I, I just want And they probably were. And they probably were. And I guess I think what I want to say is we certainly want to stand on truth, but we want to do that in love. Yeah, it's good, um, it's you know, we certainly want to love these individuals um, and help them just to see that they were beautifully created the way God intended them to be and just to help them to see that. And um, so while the consequence may be extreme, um, we need to be careful how we conduct ourselves as well. You know, one, one of the parents um, was saying that they had a young child who didn't understand why you call someone they, didn't mm -hmm. make sense to them. Mm -hmm. From an English perspective, right. that, that is yeah. true, isn't right. it? Yeah, great. So, right. right. All right, well, let's uh, go on here. This is um, uh, something that's very, very... Uh, uh, concerning mm -hmm. too, and we're seeing this more and more. Death of a biblical worldview in America. You know, a lot of people don't even understand what worldview is. You know what worldview is? Mm -hmm. Worldview is your way of thinking. And you know, your way of thinking only has two foundations, God's word or man's word. And we have generations of kids that have been given the foundation of man's word. Most of our churches, all they're trying to do is Christianize the secular worldview. And unfortunately, most people don't realize when you send your kids to a public school, you know, scripture says you're either for Christ or against. If the okay. system's not for, it's against. Mm -hmm. If the foundation of the worldview is not God's word, it's man's word. So they're getting this very anti-God secular worldview and you're trying to add God to it. You know, it, that doesn't, we can't Christianize something from the top down. Mm -hmm. Um, so, death of a biblical worldview in America. Most parents of young children don't believe in Jesus for uh, salvation. Um, it's, it says that actually 67% of American parents with preteens identify as Christian, mm -hmm. yet only 2% of those actually possess a biblical worldview. Yeah. And um, I'd say it's less than 2%. It's probably yeah. even less than that. Because yeah. when, they, when they do these tests of what, what is a biblical worldview, um, what they're not doing in most instances is testing what they believe about Genesis because you know the first 11 chapters of the Bible are foundational to the rest of the Bible all of our doctrine to our worldview and most Christians don't believe that as literal history unfortunately and most most pastors don't teach it as literal history you're not going to have a biblical worldview if you don't start with the first 11 chapters of the Bible so the number is probably less than two percent which means we have a mess in our churches out there yeah, ultimately, just like Ken says, I think this needs to be a wake-up call for the churches. We need to start being salt and light in the culture again. And, and I, I think one of the other misconceptions we have is in terms of what salt does. Salt is actually a preservative. It's supposed to be preserving from decay. So we need to be out there speaking the truth, speaking the truth in love. And not only that, but this should be a reminder for parents as well. We have a duty to train our children because if we don't, the world will. Proverbs 22, 6 very clearly says we are to train our children in the way they should go. Ephesians 6, 4 raise children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. But that also means as parents, we need to be in our word. We need to be in the Bible as well. We need to be making sure that we're continuing to fill ourselves with the truth so we can continue to train up the next generation. So, um, you know, this is just another reminder that we need to keep standing on biblical authority. And we, we say that all the time, right? We are a ministry. We love giving answers. We love being able to help people defend their faith. But really, we are a gospel-centered ministry. And it's all about presenting the true gospel, which Jesus is is the way for salvation. He is the only way for, to salvation, like it says in John 14, 6. Yeah. Well, with that, we'll uh, end off this special edition of yeah. Answers News. Thanks Thank for coming, you. guys. God bless.